Welcome, or welcome back to Better Preparedness. Uh, we just finished day three of an eight-day trek in the Roranzori Mountains in western Uganda, right close to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I'm here to talk to you about satellite beacons and alerting devices. And that's what this is. This is a Spot Gen 3 today on Better Preparedness. Well, Better Preparedness is all about those easy opportunities we have to be, well, better prepared and hopefully identify some of those risks, find some solutions. For this trip, it's an eight-day trip. It is extremely remote. You know, we're up in the mountains. It's going to be the, the peak is at 5,109 meters. That's almost like 16,000 feet or something like that. And I want to talk to you about satellite beacons and whether you should buy one, whether it's for you, you know, the sort of pros and cons and so on. I've been meaning to do this for a while. When I think back to my days, my earlier days of sort of wilderness travel and so on, that was canoe camping, canoe tripping in Canada. And I did a big trip across, uh, you know, parts of the Arctic and Alaska and down through British Columbia by bicycle. It was a solo trip. And when I think back to that, that was over 20 years ago. And if I'd needed help, the only really way to get help was maybe to flag down a motorist if I was still on a main road or reach a payphone. Uh, you know, satellite phones, also known as sat phones, you know, that was maybe starting to get into the privy of, of military and so on. But for us general folk and stuff, there just really wasn't anything to alert someone. And, you know, doing trips like that way in the north and various remote parts of the, either Canada or other parts of the world, you know, there's no real way to alert people if there was a major, I'm talking, you know, major disasters, but sometimes it's also about reassuring people. And that's one of the things that that, you know, this little device can do. Now it has, it's, you know, it has some cons as well. So I'm going to talk to you about that. What is a spot gen? Well, a spot gen is a beacon, if you think of it. Uh, it is a satellite device. Now, there's a network of GPS satellites around the world. And this little thing, especially through the antenna, which is on the start, on the top part, right? So you kind of want that ideally facing upwards. You have a variety of things you can do with this. Now, this is mainly a one-way device. And then there are some two-way devices that have more features. But of course, as with everything in this world, the more features you have, the more cost there is. Now, a spot gen... Is about I think about 250 ish dollars. I'm gonna put links to some, the Spot Gen 3 and a few other alternatives as well. So you have a device, but then you need a subscription fee because it isn't just a free device that you can randomly communicate. There is a subscription fee that's you know monthly and so on. So that you know that does add up, and it's one of those questions of is it worth it? Is it for you and everything? There's a range of of technology available to us, right? <laughs> everything from the emergency whistle, and I'll put a link up to my emergency whistle video, and you know in close proximity, that's fantastic for alerting people around. If you have access to network, again, a cell phone uh, is a great way of alerting someone, or you know, even having someone track you. There's various uh, options you have for being you know, to, to run yourself in a bit of a tracking mode so people can actually follow where you are. Then there's this, and this is a one-way communication device, but then there are also some two-way communications device. Think of this with a bit of a text pad and a text screen where you could uh, potentially, you know, message and have a bit of an exchange with whoever you're trying to alert of a major problem. But then you also have sat phones, satellite phones, and satellite phones are like a hand, like a, like a mobile phone, but at a fairly high cost, <laughs> you can call just about anyone on the earth, you know, as long as they're on a network. And you can either go sat phone to sat phone, which goes up and then down to another sat phone, or you can go to a landline. Again, all of that has a cost, and you know that's part of this decision making. This is kind of a, a sort of a. a part of that spectrum but keep in mind this is a, a one-way device all right well how does it work so up here I'm going to try to do this while I face you because I'm I have my directional microphone on and if I turn the camera the other way you won't be able to hear me as much so up here uh, in the corner that's the power button and I, I should also add make sure you do read the, the instructions you know it's in your interest really so up here you've got the power button then you've got the on the sort of it's it's running this means if it's flashing here that means you've got a gps connection and that is or the scent light if you've sent a message 
Now, down here are the options you have. SOS is the big, this is the big deal. See, they even give you a button in red that's covered. And this is about trying to alert someone of a major disaster. This is, listen, come get me. Uh, a message is sent to GEOS, which is a monitoring center. And GEOS, if you hold that down and it gets sent, well, you're essentially, uh, to a degree, empowering uh, people to really come at your, you know, come for your help. And in remote travel, um, you know, that can be critical. It's, it's pretty serious. Now here, you have this hand-to-hand -hand element, and there's another button. Again, both of these two things are there. There's a flap to prevent you from pressing it accidentally. It, this is a bit like pressing 911 if you press the SOS, but again, it depends where you are in the world and, and the availability of resources to help you. This is a minor uh, significant help call, and this can be maybe you know to a friends and family. One thing you do when you set up your account with SpotGen is you predefine certain messages and the predefine the the telephone numbers that would get a, an SMS or the email mess, uh, addresses that would receive uh, something when you alert people. Down here are three options. You've got a predefined message that can be sent to your contacts or your contact. This little foot button here, you press that and hold it down until it flashes and then it keeps flashing. Well, that's your tracking. That's running it as a beacon. Now, somebody can then follow you. They're sent a Google Maps link and they can actually see a sort of cookie crumb trail of, well, where you are and where you're going. And you can set that at reporting intervals. This is my favorite. It's the check-in box. So a little check mark there. This is a way of notifying, the way I use it, and I've used this for some bike trips in Southern Africa where I was bike touring on my own. And I kind of use this as my check-in at the end of the day, everything's okay. You could also send periodic ones, like maybe at the half day point and so on. This allows me to notify my contacts that I'm hopefully fine. And well, I am fine. And what I try to, the way I try to use this, and again, uh, it's up to you how you would like to use it, but I, I do a check-in at the end of the day. So we're on day three of an eight day trek and hopefully I can get signal with the GPS that is sent to some predefined email addresses and they get a, uh, an alert, you know, notification that I've checked in as all okay. It's another way of reassuring people when you're doing really remote travel, when you do really remote stuff or even, like that can be close by to your home but still in some remote wilderness areas or it can be really far from home. You know, right now I'm, well, I'm in Western Uganda and I'm currently based in South Africa. So it's a nice way of, of reassuring those. And you know, it's also, it takes away a bit of the doubt element of is Blair okay after you know, day three? Is Blair okay after day one, after day six? Who knows? So I don't know. I think it's a useful tool. It comes at a cost. You have the subscription fee, you have the the, the purchase price. There's also the element that, uh, you know, we can be more connected. Sometimes that's a negative thing, you know, too connected to this world. But again, you know, it's part of these pros and cons of, of what type of system to use. And, you know, cell phones only work so, so far. <laughs> There's been a few points in the mountains here where the guides have had cell phone contact and that's great. But if, certain things go really wrong you know it's nice if this is accompanied with a sat phone because then you can have that exchange and everything this is a great way of showing exactly where you are and if you have a very serious situation well again you can advise them that you know hey this is where i am it is serious and you know <laughs> please send some help you know, again it's different if you're just outside the city where you live and you can press the hand to hand button and then, you know, hopefully somebody can figure out, okay, well, how, I'm going to go out there and help them out. But uh, the SOS button is a pretty serious situation. So, yeah, you feel a bit more connected to the rest of the world than you might want to on such a remote travel. But 
I don't know. To be honest, if you have it at your disposal, I was able to borrow this. This is not my own. So it is nice to you know have access and sometimes through work or whatever. You know, and this can be used for remote travel, well, you know, remote wilderness fun that your activities that you're doing, but also in some pretty hazardous environments. And for those, like in the days where I used to have to travel to fairly hazardous environments, if you run this in track, people can see where you are sort of continuously. You know, I have to make sure this has a clear view of the sky and everything, but allows you to put in, you know, okay messages from time to time. And again, it, it can just be a way of having people know where you are if you kind of disappear from radar, so to say. And, well, anyways, what are your thoughts? What are your impressions or perspectives on these types of devices? Is it too much of an invasion of your privacy? Are you happy to have this as a backup? Have you used them? Uh, you know, what are your feature? You know, what are, what's your feedback on these types of things? Well, put that in the comment section below. Click that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. If you click subscribe, click the bell, the notification bell beside it, so you don't miss a video. And well, at some point, hopefully in the next in two and a half days from now, we've got Mount Stanley at 5,109 meters, and I'm going to put some links to this series that I'm doing about this trek because yeah this is just incredible it's it's really remote and having done Mount Kenya which is the second highest mountain in Africa and Kilimanjaro which is the first the tallest at mountain in Africa well this is number three so it's kind of a fun thing to you know be in this one and this is by far the most remote Mount Kenya definitely remote Kilimanjaro nah not so much because it's such a traveled mountain but, you know, there's a time, I you know, seems for me, there's a place for these types of things. So, yeah, give it some thought. Put your impressions below. Links to some of these products in the description below and on betterpreparedness.com. And, well, yeah, keep safe and enjoy your travels and put some comments in the section below. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.